Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, another week, another roundup. There were a lot of posts on the Power BI blog last week. It's almost like they're gearing up for something. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Dave Ruscher's got a blog post looking at a way to visualize best practice results over Power BI data sets. And what this is keying off of, if you weren't familiar with, Tabular Editor has a capability of doing best practice analyzer rules, and it comes with a set of preset rules. And so what Dave did is he actually went, created a PowerShell script, and also created a report on top of that. And it is going against the XMLI endpoint if you've got Power BI Premium or Power BI Embedded Resources, and we'll go out and look at those data sets, run the best practice analyzer rules against it, and then bring it back and allow you to visualize on top of that to see, hey, where are some areas that we can improve? Look at optimizing. Really, it's calling out where the ugly baby is. I like this so much just because, you know, Patrick and I have been talking about optimizing best practices, those types of things for a while now. And so this is a great addition to add to the tool belt of things we can do to help identify where those problem points are and then go fix it and make your reports even better. Links as always down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. How many folks are using the new look inside of Power BI? There's a toggle button there that says, yes, I wanna use the new look. I honestly have been using it since it first came out. Anytime I see the old look, I kind of twitch a little bit. There was a blog highlighting some new updates that are rolling out for the new look itself. And it's just improving, you know, pages and the toolbars and reports and dashboards, just making it a little cleaner based on feedback. Also, what I like at the end of this blog post is there is a timeline for when that new look is just going to be the look. I'm not going to spoil it for you. You got to go read the blog to see when the new look is just going to be turned on for everyone. So you can start planning now, updating education references that you have for your organization and just making sure people are aware that this is coming. All right, again, links as always down below. Chris Finland had a blog that talked about some new updates for Power Automate for Power BI. And what this is, and I'm really excited about this, is we had these export to APIs that were available for exporting Power BI reports to PDF. You can also do that with paginated reports. So now there are actions inside of Power Automate that wrap all of this up and allow you to call it. What this really fixes is there was a struggle before where folks would have to create this custom connector to call those APIs. This partly required like premium connector type support, I believe with Power Automate. The other problem it introduced is in some organizations, if you're blocking from a policy perspective, they may not allow custom connectors to actually be deployed. And with these Power BI actions that are now available, there is no custom connector the only licensing that you need is to make sure that you can run standard licenses with Power Automate. And now you can automate those items to export PDFs from Power BI reports. Really great addition. Very happy that these are now available inside of Power Automate to help you start getting those PDFs from Power BI reports. One call out real quick, because I know it'll get mentioned in the comments if I don't state it. This does require that the workspace be backed by premium capacity or Power BI embedded SKU. So. Make sure you've got that hooked up. If you're not familiar with the Gartner BI Bake Off, this is an event where multiple vendors come together and highlight capabilities of their product based on data provided by Gartner itself. So they all get the same data set. And they said, look, you've got certain scenarios that you need to implement across. Show us what your product can do. And really, this is a way for folks that are watching the Bake Off to gauge the capabilities themselves, they can vote on items, so on and so forth. The actual results of that bake off aren't publicized, but the highlights of those given product implementations are. And Justina Lechnik did a blog post on the Power BI blog where she walked through the actual demos that she did for this bake off and highlight some of the new capabilities coming with Power BI and or the capabilities that are already there. The topic of this one was world population health analysis and the data set came from the World Health Organization. So definitely check out the video that's in the blog going through all the items. You may see some cool new things that you weren't aware that were there or that are coming very, very soon. 
Speaking of things that are coming soon, the Microsoft Ignite conference is this week. Ah, another event. I'm sad I can't be there in person. Ignite is always a showcase for Microsoft. There are a lot of sessions across all of the items that Microsoft makes from products to services, everything that you want to know. It is there and it is all digital and it is all free. You do have to register to be able to do the schedule builder, things like that, but there is no cost to the event. So I definitely recommend signing up, checking out the session catalog to see what sessions are available for you. Just a pro tip, go to the session catalog, search for Power Space BI, make sure the space is there and you'll see all of the sessions that are coming for Power BI itself. Another thing to be aware of, is that all of the main sessions are like half, they're 30 minutes, so they're only a half hour, but then those sessions also have an Ask the Expert session that is live for Q&A based on the main session. So just be able to, be sure to check that out. So if you just go to the Ask the Experts, make sure that you watch the actual pre-recorded session that will be relevant to that Ask the Experts. I know that it's a little confusing, but they're paired up in twos. Make sure you watch the pre-recorded one first. I'm really excited to see what new announcements will come from a Power BI perspective, and hopefully there will be a roundup blog of some kind that will highlight those items as well on the Power BI blog. Tuesday through Wednesday, it's spanning 72 hours to cover all the time zone. A lot of sessions are going to be available at different time slots for you to go catch it. The other thing I'm gonna call out is Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, we are gonna do a hangout on the Guy in a Cube channel. It's gonna be a live stream. You can come and hang out with us. It's gonna be a little bit of a happy hour. We'll talk about all the cool new things that were mentioned at Ignite. We did the same thing for Business Application Summit. We had a great time and we are going to do it again for Ignite. Jason Himmelstein and John White from the BI Focal Show are gonna join us. Hopefully it will be entertaining for you. Also our regular Saturday live stream, this coming Saturday, Chris Finland is going to be with us to talk about some of those updates that are going to be announced at Ignite as well. So super stoked for that. All right, I wanna hand this over to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Let me know in the comments below. I wanna hear it. Also, come hang out with us in the live streams. We always have a good time. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.